So in terms of how my book contributes to the broader literature, um, I think it's about zooming in on one single issue pressure group and how looking at that can offer maybe a different perspective on histories of law reform. So, you know, the Married Women's Association, they weren't as politically visible as the suffragettes, for example, or the women's liberation movement. But they're still important to these histories of feminism, but also to histories of law reform, because after all, this was the group that was trying to use the law to change things. So what I was trying to do was take this concentrated sort of focused look at this group that was active for quite a long period of time. It was around 50 years across the 20th century. And it sort of shows that you know, people talk about how equality has been achieved today. It's been achieved now. They were saying the same thing in the 1950s. And lots of things that we consider to be relatively uncontroversial today, such as you know, women not having to leave their jobs when they get married, women being given equal pay, things, things like that, were very controversial issues at the time, actually. Um, and one of the things I talk about in, in my book is how the legal historian Rebecca Probert says today's controversies are tomorrow's orthodoxies and things like that I think are what I'm trying to contribute um, through uh, through this book and, and, and through um, having such a focused case study of a pressure group in that way. So um, in the obvious sense um, my book is a, a contribution in the sense that it's about a group that no one's really written about. No one's really written about the Married Women's Association before. But I think it's also a contribution in the sense that it shows how legal history and feminist legal history in particular can really change our perspectives of law and law reform.